This week on Pure Brews America, we brush up on our German. We follow this uh, very old purity law called the Reinheitsgebot. And we decide to take Brewery Vivant's recommendation. Either we hear, I don't want something hoppy, or I don't want something Belgian. And then we give them a Belgian hoppy beer and they go, oh, that's delicious. Strap on your boots. Here comes Pure Brews. All across America, the craft beer industry is exploding. I'm Ryan Terpstra, professional beer lover. And I'm Shannon Long, certified beer server and owner of Brew Export. Let us be your tour guides behind the scenes, where we will meet the key players and the beer makers and learn how they turn their dreams into reality. We'll be traveling across the state and introducing you to some of Michigan's best beers. It's a craft beer revolution on Pure Brews America. So today we have an oldie and a goodie. Not only can you satisfy all your touristy desires here in downtown Frankenmuth, but you can drink some great beer as well. So what's really great about Frankenmuth Brewery is its tradition, but they're also kicking out innovative food and beer. Let's go check it out. I'm a pretty big history geek, so I love that this is like the oldest brewery in Michigan. Plus a good beer, you can't go wrong. Yeah, but this Frankenmuth Brewery is great. Everything here has tasted really good. I'm trying to try the whole menu here. I do like German beers too, and this is awesome. Uh, we enjoy the food and the beer. Uh, we've eaten here before. The food is always good. It's a lot of fun. The food's good. The beer's always good. They're changing it up all the time. I like the different flavors. They're, I don't know, I guess fresher. We have people visit us from all over the world. Whether you're a local or a tourist, you come on a nice day, sit out on our patio, have a burger, have a beer, and just forget about all your cares. Come on down. I'm gonna take another drink. Frankenmuth as a town is well known for its Bavarian traditions, and that is 100% reflected in the brewery, all the way from their design to their process. What Germans do is they build a big beer cellar, and it's usually underground, under a mountain, or in a hill, and that's exactly what we did here. Germans build beer cellars like bomb shelters. God save the beer. Yeah, exactly. You can take our brewery, but you cannot take our beer from us. That's right. Umpadinkt uh, would be the German word, uh, definitely. We follow this uh, very old purity law, which will be celebrating its 500th anniversary next April, called the Reinheitsgebot. And what this purity law means is that beer only has four ingredients. Water, yeast, hops, and malted barley. That's it, that's how the Germans roll, and that's how we roll in Frankenmuth as well. Frankenmuth abides by that law strictly with some of their standby offerings, but they also take the opportunity to step outside the box and experiment with different craft styles. There'll always be four, five, or six traditional beers from the German purity law, and then we're gonna cater a little bit more to you know the consumer that wants to try something a little bit outside the box. We have all kinds of different beers, ranging from a easy American blonde beer, which is very smooth, all the way to an in, a Russian Imperial Stout or a Brown Hound Dunkel. And then we get crazy with some beers. We came out with a beer called the Hot Rocket. It was a jalapeno blonde. We like traditional German beers, but we like fun craft beers. And that's, that's what being a craft brewery is all about, fun. All right, so you got the idea of how Frankenmuth does their thing. I'm thirsty, the people behind me are thirsty. Let's find out what's special about their brews. This is our Oktoberfest. This is a traditional Martzen beer. Drinks like a Pilsner. It's got a little bit more flavor. Um, they, let it, they let it sit for them a few, four months because it's made in March. That's what a Martzen beer is. Gross. Gross. We like Oktoberfest a lot. Very German. I'm really enjoying the, enjoying the flavor. That was great. It was phenomenal. It's going down real good. When a lot of people come in when the Oktoberfest is on, it sells. People like it. People know what it is. They know the tradition. And, and face it, when you come to a German town and you have a beer called Oktoberfest, 
you got to try it. I mean, like, come on, it's it's un-German American to not do that. <laughs> it's un-German American. That's exactly right. Well, the great thing about this style too is you can do it a lot of different ways, and I love the way that you guys do it because you get that kind of almost that October fall harvest taste to it. it and I think that's really really good. It does have that grainier, more flavor that you know celebrates the harvest, and that and that's that's what beer is all about. You know, it's celebrating and good friends and family. Now, Bavarian Festival, what do people find? What do they see? We've got a carnival over there, all kinds of fun activities for the children, and then they have the, the bands, and it's all about, at that point, fun, dancing, and polka music. We even make a very special beer specifically for the Bavarian Fest called the Bavarian Brunette Dunkelweizen. One of the great things about uh, being a brewery and, uh, and being a restaurant is that we focus a lot on beer-centric foods. You know, we'll take our bratwurst and we'll marinate it in the Pilsner. We have a beer cheese soup. We have a beer cheese pizza. Any excuse uh, to drink beer, we do, but any excuse to, to drink and eat food with beer in it, also great. The task of crafting the flavors at Frankenmuth falls on a dedicated brew team, led by a man who has experienced success in the past and the present. We have a great brewmaster just stepped in, Steve Bushka, and uh, he knows his hops, <laughs> especially knows his hops. So he, he's had some award-winning beers before, but now he has some award-winning beers with us. At the World Expo of Beer, held here in Frankenmuth, Michigan, we won gold medal for our Batch 69 IPA. It was a huge victory. It was the first time that the Frankenmuth Brewery took a gold medal. Brewing the beer is all the same to me. I mean, I, I put the same amount of passion and, for lack of a better term, love into every single beer that I brew. So we are going to try some Batch 69. This beer has been in here for approximately six days it has before it's dry hopped. Right now there are Chinook and Cascade hops in our batch 69 right now then it will be dry hops with Amarillo and Centennial. Sounds Cheers. delicious. Cheers to that. Steve redid this beer um, and when he redid it he dry hopped it you know threw some hops in the fermentation tank and uh, brought that big flavor out and since he's done it it's a staple. That's oh, fantastic. It's delicious. I frequently drink IPAs and I would rate this among the best. It's very good. I'd recommend it to everybody. It is now our flagship beer. It was the Pilsner before, but now we, you know, nationwide everybody's a hop head. It's just the, the, the bouquet up front and a lot of bitterness, but, you know, smooth at the finish. So, yeah, it's one of my favorites and obviously it's one of um, everybody else's favorite too since it's won the gold medal. So I had a great time today trying some old stuff and some new stuff. We sure had some great beers. Cheers to Frankenmuth. Or should we say? Prost. Prost. Coming up next on Pure Brews, if you want to make great beer, you need the right ingredients. You know, that's kind of our thing is that we're small and, and tactical and able to, to pivot pretty quickly and listen to what our customers want. We visit a custom malting facility in Byron Center. Amanda makes a delicious beer flavored dessert and we check out the unusual housing at Brewery Vivant. And a lot of people, including my wife, walk in here like, that's never gonna work. But I walk, walked in like, this will be perfect. That's all coming up next when we return to Pure Brews. Pure Brews America is presented to you by Meyer, where you can choose from over 200 Michigan craft beers. Ever since we first opened our doors, we've been committed to developing relationships with the very best local farmers. Because we thought that would be a sensible way to offer our customers the best, freshest produce at the lowest possible prices. Now, 80 years later, this whole locally grown thing has gotten pretty fashionable. Whoever thought common sense would be so cool, hip, and trendy? Come see for yourself. Lawrence Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. 
Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Lazy days and lazy nights. I'm sitting at the bar and everything's all right. Just kicking back and taking my time. And I feel fine. Cause all I need is some fresh brew beer. Some good live music's all I want to hear. A nice thick stout or a cool pale lady. Before you choose a luxury SUV, stop by Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln and drive the amazing new Lincoln MKX. It's a stunning new expression of luxury with inspired performance and design and a long list of standard features. The all new Lincoln MKX, now available at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 mile road just east of Telegraph. Best price, smart choice, and you get the star treatment. Pure Brews America is sponsored by Hoop McInerney Star Lincoln, located at 12 Mile and Telegraph in Southfield. Barley is the grain of choice for most brewers, but it first needs to be converted into malted barley. This brings us here to the Pilot Malt House in Byron Center, Michigan. Most people don't realize that beer is a agriculture-based product, that it came from a farm, and that we're, we're trying to, you know, most people just think it shows up, or stainless vessels created this, um, but it really started in the ground just a few miles away from our shop here in Byron Center, and, and we have farms all over the state. Since the Pilot Malt House first opened its doors three years ago, they have already become Michigan's largest malt producer, using 30 different local farms totaling 800 acres of land. One of the perks of buying local is the ability to switch it up and create some cool and wacky flavors. You know, our thing is that we're, we're a pilot system. We can do unique stuff. We can do a, a grain that's never been malted before or a particular temperature that we operate the kiln at has never been done before and stuff. So, you know, that's kind of our thing is that we're small and, and tactical and able to, to pivot pretty quickly and listen to what our customers want. Despite the recent trend of IPA drinkers and hop heads, Eric reminds us that malt is here to stay. Well, most people don't realize malt is the color, it's largely the flavor profiles other than the bitterness, and it's also the alcohol content when, when used in cohort with, with yeast. So it's, it's the backbone of beer, no matter what the hop guys will tell you. The idea for the Pilot Malt House stemmed from brewers not knowing exactly where their ingredients came from. And now, Eric's mission is to bring everyone in the beer process together. If you go and ask any of these breweries, you know, where do they buy their malt from? And they say the company name. I'm like, where is it grown? Blank stare. We're relationship people as much as we're malt manufacturers because we try to bring to the same pub table the, the brewer, the maltster, which is us, and then the farmer. The hyper-local appeal of buying Michigan malt is one that rings familiar with many breweries. You know, when you go to buy a craft beer, you could get beer cheaper. You're not very price conscious when it comes to, if you're a craft beer drinker, you're, you, know, you know you can drink, drink something cheaper, but you're doing the right thing and, and choosing taste. And that's the, kind of the same thing for us. I don't think it's any coincidence either that, you know, we have the best water there is. And, you know, you throw some water, throw some, some locally grown hops, some locally sourced malt, and then some yeast, you get some pretty damn good beer. I'm Amanda and it's time to cook with beer. Today we're going to be making a beer masseau, which is a tiramisu made with stout. Here's a list of the ingredients that we're using today. You can pick them all up at your local Meyer. To get started with the beer masseau, I'm going to make whipped cream. So first I'm going to add the heavy whipping cream to the mixer and powdered sugar. Now I have it cranked up to high, we're just going to let the mixer do its job. So now that I have stiff peaks on the whipped cream, I'm gonna add that to our mascarpone cheese. So be careful as you're adding the whipped cream that you're folding it in instead of mixing to keep the air in the whipped cream. So now that I folded together the whipped cream and the mascarpone cheese, I'm gonna make the liquid that we dip the lady fingers into. To do that, I've got coffee and stout. You're gonna add about half a cup of stout. 
The reason why we're using stout for this recipe is because it's going to give the dessert a nice coffee, chocolate, and caramel note. So to get started, we're gonna layer these together in these glasses right here. I'm going to put the lady fingers into the beer and coffee mixture and just let those sit for a couple minutes. I'm gonna add the cookies one at a time to keep them nice and crunchy. If you'd prefer to have it another way, you can definitely do that and leave them in there a little bit longer. So here I'm just mixing on both sides and adding it to the bottom. Now that we have a layer of the cookie in there, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of our filling. So layer of filling, layer of cookie. I recommend refrigerating for at least 40 minutes before serving. To garnish the biramisu, I like to do some dark chocolate shavings on top. And that's how you make biramisu with stout. Cheers. At Pure Brews America, we not only want to introduce you to all kinds of new beer, we want to make sure that you find the one that's right for you. And to do that, we're enlisting help from our friends at Meyer. They have over 200 Michigan craft beers to choose from, and they want to make it easy for you to find the beer that fits your taste. Whether you're making a shopping list at home or you're on your smartphone in the craft beer aisle, log on to Meyer.com slash selection. Now scroll down to the section titled Pick Your Pour. This brand new addition to the Meyer website uses eight different flavor profiles to sort the beers that Meyer carries in your local store. The different flavor styles are color coded, like this purple tab, where you'll find spiced and complex beers like Brewery Vivant's Farmhand. Or maybe you prefer a light and refreshing beer. Then Frankenmoose The Hef is a brand that will match your taste buds. So not only does Meyer have the lowest craft beer prices allowable by law, they also have the biggest selection and they are making sure that you have the best possible experience when you shop there. Log on to Meyer.com slash selection and make sure you're getting the right beer for your taste buds using Pick Your Pour. Up next on Pure Brews, the craft beer industry is saving our country's reputation. American beers used to be like the laughing stock of the world. You know, people would make fun of American beer, um, but now it's very different. We head to Grand Rapids and visit Brewery Vivant when Pure Brews returns. It's time for On Tap Trivia, brought to you by the Michigan Brewers Guild. Yeast is a critical ingredient used in beer fermentation. Where in the world and what year was the first yeast culture isolated? Was it 1698 at Germany's Brewery of Einstaffen? Maybe in 1805 at St. James Gate Brewery in Ireland? Could it have happened in 1881 at Stiegel Brewery in Austria? Or two years later in 1883 at Denmark's Carlsberg Brewery? Find out when Pure Brewers America returns. Ha <laughs> Meat! 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 Ha Meat! 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 We're the Cronin Law Firm bringing more to the table when you sit down with attorney Sabrina Cronin and her law firm, they'll stand up for your rights. Backed by a full-service investigative division, Cronin Law delivers results, whatever your legal issues may be, your problems on the table, and see how much more Cronin Law can do for you. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. Cheers. At Lawrence
Women's Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. Welcome back. Here's the answer to this week's On Tap Trivia. Where in the world and what year was the first yeast culture isolated? 1698 at Brewery Weinstephan in Germany? 1805 at St. James Gate Brewery in Ireland? Austria Stiegler Brewery in 1881? Or Carlsberg Brewery in Denmark in 1883? Have you ever had a Carlsberg brew? The first yeast culture in the world was isolated at their brewery in Denmark in the year 1883. So I'm crazy excited to be here at Brewery Vivant today because I've never drank in a funeral parlor before. Yeah, this building behind us is 100 years old in a historic area in Grand Rapids, and now it's a place where people come to celebrate, so let's go check it out. Let's go. My friend told me it was a funeral home, but we found out it was actually a chapel, but the funeral home was like next door. And a lot of people, including my wife, walk in here like, that's never gonna work. But I walk, walked in like, this will be perfect. Yeah. It'll be a pub, we'll put the bar there. Well, it's beautiful. You know, it's kind of different, but uh, what they did with it was really great. It's a little different, but it definitely gives it that Belgian feel, the old world feel. Brewery Vivant has only been open about five years, but already they're a staple in the Grand Rapids beer scene. We had some time off and we wanted to jump up here to Grand Rapids because we knew it was the beer town of the Midwest, right? They call this the center of the universe and it, it is for Grand Rapids, I think. Yeah, the biggest compliment we, we get is when people have company in town, they live in Grand Rapids and they want to show them what Grand Rapids is all about, they bring them here. You come on a day like today when it's everything is perfect, the beer is perfect, and it, it's a good day. And the fans of Avant will tell you why they are always dragging their friends to this place. Brewery Vivant is the place that made me like beer. So, you know, the Belgian style and the craft, it just, you know, it's my first love. Yeah, I spend more time here than I do with my family for the most part, but that's all right. I get enjoyment out of seeing people enjoy what we do every day. Either we hear, I don't want something hoppy or I don't want something Belgian. And then we give them a Belgian hoppy beer and they go, oh, that's delicious. And we go, yeah, because it's right. We've been to Belgium a couple times, so it's, it, it compares, it's like right on par. So it's, it's fantastic. All of their barrel-aged stuff is just amazing. I always ask because it's constantly changing and it's always a new, uh, something new to try. I love all their beer. It's very diverse, it's very original. They come out with new things so often that uh, I always like to try different things that they have all the time. Each of their beers have their own twist, American twist on it, which makes it you know, a little bit more special. There's got to be something on the menu that you're going to like. Two thumbs up, I don't know. <laughs> if you like Belgian beers, this is a must stop. Um, it's just a unique experience. It's different from every other kind of brewery I've been to. Well, if you like uh, good atmosphere, people that treat you real good, uh, great beer and great food, uh, this is a place to come. This is the Big Red Cock. The Big Red Cock. All right, It cheers. is pronounced cock. That was a, a pub one-off. We never thought we'd make it again. We, we had a lot of fun with the name, uh, you know, Big Red Cock. Uh, we make people say the whole name a lot of times at the bar. We don't let them get away with the Big Red. Yeah. I'm drinking Big Red, which is my favorite. I could drink this all day long, and sometimes I do. It's a great beer. It's made primarily with a citra hop, and it gives it this kind of tropical mango uh, flavor that comes out of the hop. People will refer to this as an IPA. Uh, technically not, because the malt bill is a little different. Uh, we call it a hoppy red ale. The inspiration for Vivant came when Jason and his wife Chris were trekking through Europe. They encountered small farmhouse breweries that produce beer specifically for the surrounding community. Well, what we specialize in is what we call Belgian and French inspired beers. Basically what we do is we bring yeast from France and Belgium and make all our beers with those exclusively. When my wife and I visited over there, we met a lot of uh, French and Belgian brewers. And I'd just come off a German brewing school, which is very strict. 
Then you go into Belgium and France, and these brewers are pretty free. It's more a very artistic approach. They have complete trust in us, complete faith in us, so we have free reign to do anything we want to do. You know, these guys have so many ideas for beers, like we have to kind of contain them. You know, we're not trying to take over the world here. We're not going to make, you know, a million IPAs with, you know, 200 IBUs. That's not, what, that's not our style. That farmhouse ingenuity led to the crafting and naming of a Vivant flagship brew. So this is the farmhand, a uh, nice kind of cloudy farmhouse ale. You get lemon, you get a little zip. It's, it's one of these beers that, that works really well as an introduction to craft beers. Starting with something light like the farmhand was definitely a way to go. There's huge depth to the flavor and you can't beat it really. But it, it's lighter bodied, but it's really interesting still. So it's got a lot of nuances. It's a little bit lemon character uh, and a little bit of, we just call it a little bit of a funk. Mm -hmm. uh, that farmhouse funk and uh, it just makes a it makes a great food beer but it's also a good everyday beer and when I find myself needing a beer this is kind of my go-to. Yeah. Vivant is a lead certified brewery. They publish a sustainability report every year and they also have a goal to produce as many of their own products as possible. Our very first concept was to put this brewery on a farm somewhere but where that falls apart is you kind of lose that accessibility to where all the people are. So what we've done instead is uh, try to make this urban farm uh, in a plot at our house, and uh, we have a dedicated person to call our farm hand. Last year we pulled out over ni around 900 pounds of, of produce. This year I'm hoping to do about a thousand. That's kind of my goal. And knowing where your food comes from to us is really important. What better? place to get something from your own garden. So the chefs can get on my calendar and kind of say, okay, with this date, we'll probably be expecting to get, say, carrots or radishes. We talk with the kitchen quite a bit about, you know, th these are the beers that I'm making. And they'll, pair, they'll, they'll pair a dish with that. And then the kitchen will say, well, I got this special coming up in next month. If I have an open slot in, a, in the brew schedule, I can make a beer to pair with that dish. We have a vision in our brains, what we want this beer to taste like, and we're gonna find that ingredient to fit that vision. Then I will grow that ingredient for that beer, absolutely. Those fresh ingredients are used often by a kitchen staff that has impacted taste buds around the Grand Rapids area. You think if it's a brewery that you're just gonna come here for the beer, but the food is actually amazing. The burger is probably one of the best burgers in the area. The burger is my favorite. Can't go wrong with the burger, and they always have great specials. You could just have the food and it'd be great. You could just have the beer and it would be great. But we really try to ask, again, ask questions. And if we could marry those together in a pairing, it kind of elevates the enjoyment of, of both those things, the food and the beer. That's that experience moment where it really makes an impact and people, it kind of, it can blow people's mind. Jason, thanks so much for having us for Brewery Vivant. We had a great day. Thanks for coming out today. But uh, before you go, I got one more surprise for you. The end of every hard day deserves Das Boot. Oh my goodness. Four liters of fun. All right. We're going to fill that up. Thanks for watching Pure Bruce. <laughs>